ensemble includes a camera hidden in her glasses so that we can see as she sees and another in her backpack remember what Allie looked like before well take a look at her now we sent Allie to another school in a different state where no one knew her as herself this school was brave enough to let us come in and see just how differently Allie would be treated as an overweight kid as Allie and her mother are walking to their car, a passerby insults her. I was hanging back, listening to the guys talk as you walk away. And the guy said, did you check out the junk on her? What an ass. After that experience, Allie feared the worst. Well, I can't do this. I'm going to keep it too I'm going to be fine. I don't think I'm secure enough to do this. Why did I let myself do this, Mom? Because it's an incredible experience, Al. Hi, I'm here. Allie's having a little bit of a meltdown. But I'm mean, really big. Hmm? Despite her reservations, Allie decides to go ahead. And that's what you have to think about, you know? I can't believe I accepted this. Okay. Hi, Allie Smith. Allie, have a seat, please, okay. and welcome to Stratford Probably. High School. Thank you. No Hi. problem at all. Please you introduce yourselves, ladies. Her name is Allie, guys, and girls. Biology, the two girls just really didn't make eye contact with me. They didn't, like, really listen to what I was saying. It's just kind of hard, hard emotionally, sitting there feeling completely out of place. I hate high school. Basically, walking down the halls was like walking into hell. I felt pain that was excruciating. People were laughing at me. Lunch, it was so blatant, it was ridiculous. By the end of the school day, Allie had had enough. It's hard to articulate because it's more of an emotion, but I basically just felt like... <laughs> I mean, if I can use that word, I, I mean, I really don't know how else to explain it. It was just a terrible experience. I felt... <sighs> I felt... I felt like kids were just looking at me and basically judging me by my looks and basically just making fun of me because that's what they do and because fatness is so such a joke now it's just something that's made fun of it's like something like race people don't go and like haha you're like you're white or ha you're black it's like they see a fat person and they think that they have the right to laugh at them Allie got to experience what overweight kids go through every day low self-esteem the sadness the inability to look at other children it is this deep 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 sadness I can't say deep enough I think Allie will go through life with a new sensitivity and I think it probably was a very life-changing experience for her am I gonna have to come for the whole day tomorrow no nope. Later, Allie goes back to Stratford High to tell students how they made her feel. I was treated very poorly by our class. But first, we'll tell you why this girl has had such a lasting impact on Meredith Vieira. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm like the prey. People come after me because I'm fat. I eat, and I feel worse, and then I gain weight, and then I keep eating. It's want to be normal. Whenever I walk down the hallway, people would scream out moo to me. Kids call me fat boy, fat so. 
The prevention survey found that teasing is a major issue with these kids. They report both that they're much more likely to be teased at school than regular weight kids and that they see other fat kids being teased as well. Prevention Magazine's just released 2003 Childhood Health Survey examines all aspects of the childhood obesity epidemic, both the medical and the emotional. I know firsthand how overweight kids feel because I was one of them. That girl in the red coat, that was me. I was 11 years old and almost 30 pounds overweight. I don't have many photos from that time because I didn't like the way I looked. Kids called me chubby, chunky, porker, that's so. But what hurt the most was the constant ribbing of an adult family friend saying, I wonder when you're going to lose that baby fat. Suddenly, my weight hit home. Often, the teasing and discrimination overweight kids experience in school also occurs in what should be a safe haven, their homes. Parents, siblings, and even family friends seeking to help often harm with words and deeds. It's one thing when children are teasing you on the playground. It's a little easier to walk away from the children on the playground. But it is so much more painful when it comes from your mother or your father or your sister or your brother. Those are the kind of remarks that stay with you forever. Crystal Johnson is the eldest of seven kids and the only one who is heavy, though there are weight problems on the father's side of the family. Now 10 years old, she felt alone in her world. Being heavier than the other kids made me feel really upset sometimes. And sometimes I just ignored the fact that I was big, heavier than everyone else. When we would go places out to eat, she'd be the only one who'd get told, maybe you should have a chicken sandwich instead of the cheeseburger. She got stares. I made jokes. I mean, I'm a father, and I'm, I was wrong. I was like, OK, you know, how many pieces of cake were that? I would call her chubby like my dad does. Sometimes it did feel like they were being mean to me. I refused to let her down anymore. I wanted her to get better. And I sat down with her dad, and I said, this is not her fault. This is our fault. And we have to be over to her to get it right. I want to talk about something very serious today. The Johnsons sought a solution in kid shape and kinder shape, California-based programs for families of overweight children as young as three. Una dos tres. The best way to treat obesity is prevention. If you can teach these parents and teach these children early in life, then it's easier. You did well. It is very hard to change your parenting style. What I am simply doing is trying to give suggestions to the parents of how to handle situations, how to handle their child's weight problem. If they're insulted, I truly am sorry. When you see them in the school pictures get bigger and bigger, and you notice it, and then when you go to touch their hand, you can feel the thickness in their hand. And when you go to hug them, you have to go around more. And it's hard to say as a mom, but you pull back because you don't want to have to say, my child is overweight and they have a problem. And so you don't hug as much as you used to. And you don't kiss and hold hands as much. The kids absolutely feel the rejection from their parents. If a parent says to a child, oh, look a little heavy there, or you're fat, which I hear parents say, or got a little bulge, don't you? Kids really see themselves there their body image changes. They start to see themselves as fat. It is the most lonely, terrible, sad feeling. I've read reports where obese children say they are as sad as children with cancer getting chemotherapy. And that's how left out and isolated they feel. I didn't get to play football. That's probably how isolated Crystal feels in her family. When you give her one thing as opposed to everybody else, it was isolating her. It made her different 
from everybody else at the table. I know what I'm doing. She would get the statements at the table. Well, why do we have to eat this if Crystal's the one who's overweight? She's the one who needs a diet, not me. I'm skinny. And occasionally, you would even get, Crystal, it's your fault. We have to eat this. It's more about a punishment than about eating healthy and doing something good for yourself. My parents would tell me about my weight because I was sneaking food that I wasn't supposed to. And they told me, Crystal, you might not want to hear this, but it's going to help. You have to stop. And so when the, you, they would say to you, stop eating that, how would that make you feel? Um, I, w I would feel mad and sort of ashamed. Ashamed? Yes. Anyone else feel ashamed? Yeah, I have to apologize, Crystal. I'm sorry that I didn't you know, treat you like I treated everybody else. I'm sorry that I, I was the one who just helped the problem. I'm sorry I let it go as long as I did. Got you. you know, I told my wife, I'm sorry I didn't do what you needed me to do. Get it, get it. It's a family problem, but I made it a Crystal problem. And now the entire Johnson family, not just Crystal, has learned lessons to improve all their lives. And I don't think that the kids even notice that they don't do any of what they used to do because they all have been taught that that's how it is. And when I say no more Captain Crunch because you guys haven't been using the half a cup scoop that we got from Kitchen, they go, okay, when we go to the park, they know that we're there for exercise. It's deciding to get healthy. It's deciding that you don't want to be like this anymore. That you don't want your child to be in pain. That you don't want to be in pain. The way to get rid of their obesity is to say, it's okay, love yourself, accept yourself, so that they can turn around and take care of themselves and show their self-worth, their value in society. Later, the kids from Stratford High tell Allie why overweight people make them so uncomfortable. I just kind of looked and laughed in the moment, I guess. But next, how our kids are literally eating themselves to death. We had to purchase two scales to weigh children greater than 350 pounds. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are really in the midst of a dual epidemic. Experts call it diabesity. Over the past decade, childhood cases of type 2 diabetes have increased tenfold because of rising rates of obesity. Commonly called adult onset diabetes, children as young as eight years old are being diagnosed with the disease. The consequences of this devastating illness could lead to an early grave for many of its victims. Our children are literally eating themselves to death. Bye, one. We're killing our kids because we're feeding them food that they shouldn't be eating and encouraging them to be sedentary. And the two combined are a time bomb. If we don't get a handle on this, what's going to happen is that we're going to get kids developing illnesses at a very early age and some of these illnesses can actually kill them illnesses like type 2 diabetes heart disease asthma high cholesterol hypertension and bone and joint problems their joints cannot carry their weight the number of children that we're seeing with not just overweight but morbid obesity is increasing in fact we had to purchase two scales to weigh children greater than 350 pounds i'm just going to take a quick listen to your heart okay we have a number of children taking the same medications as their parents and their grandparents okay so you are down a pound and a half but that doesn't mean that things can't be done effortless take dave zenzenko the editor of men's health magazine You'd never guess that a man who tells millions how to have the perfect body was once a fat kid. From the age of 9 to maybe 13 or 14, I was about 20 or 30 pounds overweight. It was a trying time being an overweight teen because you look around and you see all these people who are enjoying these things. And you say, hey, you know, I want to get to the point where I'm having fun and enjoying fitness and relationships and these kinds of things. 
Also, my father was about 100 pounds overweight. He was morbidly obese. So he kind of became this, this negative example for me. His weight led to hypertension, which then led to heart disease, which led to diabetes. And finally, at the very young age of 52, he had a stroke and died. My father dying young and like that really taught me a profound lesson about health and fitness. And then I just decided I had enough and that I was going to wage war on fat. With good nutrition and lots of exercise, Dave won his battle. The best thing to do is to look at being overweight as something that is an obstacle that is keeping you from getting the most out of your life. See it as something that needs to be managed and overcome. It's the enemy. That's mine again. John Marks is today where Dave Zinzenko was 20 years ago. My father has diabetes, and my mom says that if I get any heavier, I'm in, like, the risk group, and I don't want to have that happen. Two-thirds of the parents that we surveyed who have obese kids were also fat themselves. How you make these kinds of lifestyle changes in your kids is to make them yourself. We needed to be much more proactive. It wasn't the kids' problems. It was all of our problem, and we all need to make a change, whether we really like it or want to or not. For the marks, they have the awareness, and so now it's going to be to figure out how can they take the awareness and translate it into action. Here are a few of the things that I want you to think about when we're Enter here. nutritionist Heidi Skolnick to help John and his family manage their eating. All right, rules of grocery shopping are don't be hungry when you start shopping, make a list, stick to the list. One percent. Iceberg lettuce just isn't as nutrient-rich as the darker greens. It's kind of good to expand your food choices. You might pick once a month a new food you haven't tried before. Like to eat mango? I've never had mango. I'm excited with Heidi here, you know, teaching our family about nutrition. I mean, there's, like, so much to learn. And, you know, it might just be the best thing in the world. Good honey, dude. Have you guys ever had this? The nice thing about this is there's a beginning and an end. A lot of families don't even know that the food choices they make each day sabotage them. It's not no fried foods, but how about having fried foods no more than twice a week? So it allows you to get that food in there, but it's not having it so much that, again, it sabotages your own desire toward an appropriate weight. or upset or bored, I tend tended to go right to the cabinet and get a can full of cookies. I didn't ever stop eating. It was hard to acknowledge the fact that I had a child with a weight problem. And no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to bring it to a level that Rachel would understand. Rachel's parents found Shape Down, a national program that targets the emotional causes of childhood overeating. Often with obese kids, they have what we call crossed wires. So the feeling doesn't meet the need. One thing that parents can teach is to say, how do I feel? I feel sad. I need an ice cream cone. No. I feel sad. I need to talk about it. I feel hungry. I need some food. One way to address the obesity issue with your child is bring them to a pediatrician, have a doctor talk to them about the health implications of weight. But it is truly a medical issue. It isn't an issue of looking good. It's an issue of feeling good. It's an issue of preventing cancer and diabetes and heart disease. My parents made losing weight lots easier for me because they were always there asking how I felt, what I needed, and that just made it a whole lot easier. I think my whole family really benefited. We watch what we eat. We'll go on a bike ride. Sometimes we'll walk. We'll go to the park. And we'll just have fun while doing it.
Nothing ever tastes as good as thin feels. Because the fruit reward only lasts a couple of seconds, <laughs> while the other reward lasts you a lifetime. <laughs> you know what the bottom line is? It's about health and fitness and not how you look. If you are eating healthy and if you're involved in fitness, you're a cool person. And that's what it's about. When we return, Allie comes clean. I wanted them to realize that I wasn't actually who I appeared to be. And school's on the front line of the weight battle. People had this absolutely gut-level, visceral sort of reaction to sending out this letter, how dare you? We'll be right back. Imagine going from fat to thin in less than an hour. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. When fat, like me, how to win the weight war continues. After this from our ABC stations. Turn to Fat Like Me, How to Win the Weight War. Schools are on the front line of the obesity epidemic, feeding our children, involving them in athletics, and teaching them about health. Increasingly, they've taken matters into their own hands with new weaponry in the war on weight. We do scoliosis screening, we do hearing screening, we do vision screening, and with other, every other screening we do, we notify parents if there's a problem. Why don't we do it in this instance? The East Penn School District sent out letters to hundreds of parents, telling them their children had a weight problem. It stirred up a storm of controversy far beyond the small Pennsylvania town of Emmaus. People had this absolutely gut-level, visceral sort of reaction to sending out this letter, how dare you? And in our own school district, uh, we had people who were very, very unhappy. I mean, I didn't really think it was in the school district's place to really say anything. I was shocked. It infringes on your motherhood. You know, someone's, someone other than you or your doctors pointed out to you that your child's overweight. But in the end, it was a wake-up call for the entire family. Well, I went to the doctor and he said, it's because you ate too much of bad carbos. Keep going. You can do it. We're in better health now than we were before the letter came. Hi, Eric. We're going to do a height and weight today. The fact that Eric doesn't appear extremely overweight is one of the reasons why BMI is such a wonderful tool because it's really giving us the ratio of weight to height and how they relate to one another. We use BMI, body mass index, to assess body fat. See what it is? That plus that. Body mass index is a simple measurement of weight in kilograms over height in meters squared. And a BMI over 25 is defined as overweight, and a BMI over 30 is defined as obese. This is like a social taboo. You're not supposed to do this. Sort of ironic. You can talk about so many other things, but you can't talk about an individual's weight and an individual's weight where potentially it could be doing a lot of harm. What the prevention study showed is that parents were either not aware of the huge health risks that are implied with obesity, or they're not believing that it really affects their own kids. Feet together. We had one very simple goal. We don't care how a kid looks. This is not a cosmetic issue. Do you know, are you aware of the potential health risks of this thing of being overweight or underweight? Our contention was right from the beginning that most people didn't know about that. I can tell you they know about it today. You're all set. Yay. Good job. Though the medical consequences of childhood obesity are dire, the psychological and social implications matter most to kids themselves. Honestly, children don't care as much about their risk of medical complications, but not feeling good about yourself is something you have to live with every day. Allie's experience in the fat suit will be with her forever. But unlike the millions of truly overweight children, Allie's weight came off in one hour. I knew that these people didn't know me for me, and I knew that I wasn't actually a fat girl. 
But just being put in that position makes you realize that it's just that hard. And I was completely miserable. You ready for your makeup to come off? Oh, yes. I never have thought about it. I never even realized that it, was, it could possibly be this hard. I thought it just could be a passing experience. I didn't really expect it to turn into something as huge as it did. I was thinking how, how fortunate I am that I'm actually not that big and how I take it for granted that I'm not this size and how horrible it would be being in high school, being 15 years old, and having to deal with this. It's almost like a handicap in some ways. It's a disability. Thank you. <laughs> it's terrible, but I'm happy to be back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> there you go, hold it on your face, rub it in. Don't work too hard, though. them to realize that I wasn't actually who I appeared to be. I can't wait to go back to bio. Sweet revenge. Allie was excited to show her true self to the kids at Stratford High. I wanted to go back to all of my classes because I want to teach kids a lesson that judging is terrible and that you should be careful what you say and what you do. You want to go in the front? <laughs> I mean, Allie was encouraged to share her experience with her classmates. My name is Allie Smith. I was a student here yesterday. I came in a fat suit, so I looked a little different. And I, um, I came in here kind of naive to what was going to be happening, but as I was walking down the halls, kids would make sly remarks or they would laugh at me behind my back or they would just kind of leave me there with no escape. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to, else to put it. You being the person that you are just looking at you now, you're a very like slim person. Like You've never had to go through something like that. Yeah. I just wanted to know how you thought that experience was because I know that there are a lot of people in this school that looked exactly like you looked yesterday. Yeah. And they go through every day of their life. Right. I couldn't imagine having to deal with that every day. I really couldn't because it was it was that tough. It was it was that horrible. I couldn't I couldn't even fathom. What Allie experienced that day is only a fraction of what most overweight kids experience every day. Stratford High was one of only two schools out of the hundred we contacted in the tri-state area that allowed us to conduct the fat suit experiment. It was their way of addressing the important issue of teaching tolerance, compassion, and respect. Next, tears fall as the kids from Stratford High open up to Allie. I hate to see that they have to go through this. When Fat Like Me continues. Return to Fat Like Me, how to win the weight war. I know this sounds totally cliche, but it's made me a better person. It's really changed my perspective of the world. It's changed my perspective of different types of people than myself. It's changed everything about my former set stereotypes of appearances. We are here with Allie, John Marks, Christy Ann, and some of the students from Stratford High School and Stratford High School's principal, Dan Hatch. First of all, thank you all for joining us. Ali, I want to start with you because you said, I know it sounds like a cliche, but I'm a better person for having gone through this. How has your perspective changed? Well, personally, I think that you can't understand something until you experience it yourself. And it's changed my attitudes because just for one day, for a few hours, being someone that I was not, I couldn't imagine dealing with it every single day of my life. I didn't expect kids to be so outwardly mean to me, to my face. And I remember one kid looked me right in the eyes and started laughing. Joel, you were in the lunchroom, right? Do you remember seeing uh, Allie come in? Yes, I do. She walked in and, and she walked by and she knocked the chair down with her backside. We just all started laughing at her. Because she was fat? Yes. Yeah. But Chad, you were in the hall. And you were caught on tape, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I did laugh that day she came in, but kind of tried to keep it to a, like a 
and le some level of respect, I guess you could say. I didn't go right to her face like some probably other kids did, but I did laugh when she turned around, and it was more of a reaction of being shocked, I guess, than just being mean, you know? Do you think fat kids are free game? I wouldn't say free game, but it's they stick out more than a regular person, you could say. I don't want to say regular, but uh, like they kind of just get made fun of first before a popular kid would. Sean, you're shaking your head. Uh, she came into our history class, and, you know, first thing people would say was, like, wow, she's big. I looked at her, and I thought in my head, like, wow, what were their mom feeding her? <laughs> but it was rude, because people, like, that were sitting behind her just got up, and they sat on her desk like she was too big to see over. Sometimes the reaction is to, to make fun, to poke fun, but there's also, it seems, an inclination to not look at the person. And I know in biology class, when Allie came into the classroom, you ignored her, the two of you. Jessica, why did you choose to ignore her? When, when she came in the room, I didn't really think that I was ignoring her because she was just a new student and I was just, I just didn't really care. But on the tape, it, it does seem like I did ignore her. I didn't make eye contact with her. But then again, I didn't want to stare at her the whole time. But you had a different feeling, Allie, being in the room. Yeah, I did. I definitely thought that you were ignoring me. <laughs> yeah, that hurt me a lot. I thought that you looked at me and you saw that I was fat. And then I sat down and I felt that you guys didn't really make an effort to communicate with me. Mary, what do you think when you hear that? Well, I feel bad. Like, I didn't realize that she felt that we were ignoring her and stuff. but. Like, it had nothing to do with her weight or anything. So the fact that this very large girl walked into the classroom had no impact on you? No. Mm -hmm. Allie, what's going through your head right now, listening to these comments? I have to say that I do question the sincerity of some of them, just because I'm wondering whether or not they're being completely honest. To me, I'm, I can't really trust anyone in this situation. There are some kids who uh, have said that they don't even want to be friends with a kid who's overweight. That's just not somebody they want to associate with. Allie, when you went into history class, you met Carla, right? Mm-hmm. One of the people in the class said earthquake when she walked in, and I just, just laughed because everybody else was laughing because I find it funny. Like, I know it's mean, and that's, that's why I felt really bad the next day, and I wanted to know her experience because I'm, like, it's, it's horrible, just everything about that, like, I, I, I'm glad you went through the experience, but I also feel bad that you had to go through what you went through. Like, nobody should ever have to go through that, but that happens every day. I've been mostly overweight for my whole life, and I know what she went through. I know how much it hurts to be made fun of. But then, Carla, you were not able to get up and say, stop this, this isn't right, knowing what you know. It's, I think it's more that you don't want to go against what everybody else is doing, and that's why there's the stereotype that you can make fun of fat people because nobody wants to go against the crowd. Allie, I'm pretty sure you would hate to have, like, you never, you've probably never been made fun of, like, about anything. Like, you're beautiful, you're skinny, you have nothing seriously, like, wrong with you, and nobody would ever think to make fun of you. But when it comes to fat people, everybody thinks it's okay. I want to talk to um, Principal Hatch, who's been sitting there very oh, patiently yeah. and quietly. Um, yeah. Why did you open up your doors, and, and what have you learned through all this? I think what you've done here is, is allowed this issue to, to be discussed amongst young people, and that it is hurtful when you make those types of comments. But it's a risk, and we decided that um, the risk was worth it, and you see that here this afternoon. John, I know that you've experienced firsthand what it's like to be teased, so let's just take a look at what you had to say. I get made fun of all the time. I'm picked on because of it. I know that I'm fat, but I don't want to be reminded about it every 10 seconds. So telling last line, I know that I'm fat, but I don't want to be reminded of it. When I'm in school or in public, or most of the time, I, I hear people commenting behind my back, and it annoys the heck out of me. You can't, like, just sit there and, like, let people talk about you. You have to, like, say something to them, first of all. It's, you can't it's just It's easy say that. for you to say that, right, but it it's is. not. But when I look in the mirror, it's harder for me to say what you're saying because I am really fat. I know that I'm gonna get picked on because I've had it through almost my entire life. I've had low self-esteem because of it. So if you're only gonna be fat for one day, it doesn't show the perspective of somebody who's had it their entire life. What I found so interesting with Allie, she's got tremendous self-esteem and within the matter of a day, 
seem to lose a big chunk of it. I, I had never known how someone, you know, fat can be so insecure and have so little self-esteem. Like, I thought I knew, but I, I didn't. <laughs> Every single second of that day, I just wanted to strip the fat suit and tell everyone that it, it wasn't really me. I know, Christiane, uh, for Allie, this was a one-day thing. You have lived with this for a long time. You know what it's like on an everyday basis. I'd love to have everybody here get a chance to hear your words. Um, when you're overweight, disappointment is like an everyday thing. So any more disappointment is a lot harder to deal with. That's why overweight girls wear bigger clothes, sweatshirts, sweatpants, because they have that feeling if I wear something tight, Someone's definitely going to say something. Do you have any aces? It's really hard because you try to look the other way and you can't. No matter where you are, there are always people who make fun of you. It's horrible because you can't just take off the fat suit at the end of the day and say, I'm going to go in tomorrow and show all of them how, how good I look. Because you go in the next day and you look the same and the same thing happens. Amanda, I have, I'm looking at your face, and I can see that this is upsetting you, and I, I want you to tell us what's, what's going on with you. Because I hate to see that they have to go through this every day. And seeing Christiane's video and her saying how hard it was, and she has to live through it, just not being able to know how they feel and connect with them. It just hurts, and I feel really bad. So you felt her pain and, and wanted to respond to it. So, Joel, you're, you're sitting next to Christiane, and I know that you were one of the kids in the lunchroom with Allie who saw her knock over the tray, and it was funny. Can you respond to what Christiane is saying now? Are these things that you maybe you've never thought about? No, I didn't really. Like, I know they had feelings, but I never thought, like, you felt like that. Now that I know, you know, it's changed my whole... I don't think I'm gonna make fun of fat people anymore. I think you've all been extremely articulate. It's brave of all of you to, to come here today and to share your honest opinions about all of this. Thank you all so much. We'll be right back. When we come back, how you at home can join in on the discussion. Welcome back. Finally, if you still don't believe that obesity is a serious and growing problem in this country, consider this. Scientists at the Centers for Disease Control predict that within six years, 40% of us, 68 million Americans, will be obese. A staggering statistic. To find out more about winning the war on weight and to chat online with some of the experts from tonight's show, go to abcnews.com. From all of us at ABC, Prevention, and Men's Health, good night. This has been an ABC News Rodale Television production. Cassette copies or transcripts of this program, call 1 800 505 6000.